Good evening, folks, and welcome to Alien Addict. Now, a massive thank you to each and every one of you, to all the subscribers, to everybody putting the thumbs up, to everybody that's hitting the bell, to the, the 14 Patreons that I have. I can't thank you all enough. The support that you are giving me is what keeps me getting behind this desk, doing the interviews. That I'm a curiosity for the subject, don't get me wrong. Um, but... Um, it's it's very overwhelming, and uh, I, yeah, I just can't thank you enough. And I would also like to apologise if I'm not going to get the videos out as quick as I want to for you guys. I've, I'm currently I've got another two interviews to edit for you guys, and let me tell you this: so this interview has a few problems with the audio, like the last interview did, where I kind of pop and. It, it goes low and then it goes high. You can hear it. It's manageable uh, unless you, you know, you're a complete and utter bell end and you really, really just cannot cope with any bad audio whatsoever. <sighs> if you, I'm sorry, okay? Shit happens. The mic is either on its way out or it's something that I'm doing wrong. If it's, I'm trying to find out what I'm doing wrong. Um, maybe I do need to wear headphones during the interview process um but i've always managed without them before and it's been fine uh so i think it's something else but anyway unless it's popping now and then it is definitely the mic but thank you so much guys i'll let you watch the interview it's thomas from mars moon space tv somebody i've been subscribed to for many many years before alien addicts before all this 51 that was my channel to start off with i used to be a dj I was called all this DJ Elvis. An ex-girlfriend thought it was a good idea because my first name's Ollie, and I never played Elvis. But she, for some reason, she just said all this. She was an Elvis fan, uh, but yeah, that's why I was called all this fifty one. Alien, it's a lot got a better ring to it. I know, um, but yes, Mars Moon Space TV guys, check out his channel. Um, check out the links below, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna stop ranting now. And uh, sorry about the audio. Good evening, Thomas. How are we tonight, my friend? Hi, good evening, Oliver. I am fine, thank you. How are you? Mate, it is, it's a privilege having you on the show. I think I said before uh, when I interviewed Dolly that your channel was probably one of the first channels that I subscribed to when I, when I actually before I got a YouTube channel myself, and then I got into um, Hello Dog. <laughs> I got into uh, doing Mars videos, and I yeah. think I was inspired by yourself from Mars Moon and Space Mars Moon Space TV. Um, I hope to hear, yeah, thank you. <laughs> tell us a little bit bit about your channel and your journey with that before we get going. Yeah, well, uh, I started in 2014, 13, 14. Uh, with Mars Moon Space TV, and, and, and I remember I was uh, on Facebook and I looked at a guy's post, Neville Thompson it was his name's post, uh, of a gigapan and saw something that looks like a doorway within a rock, and it actually looked like there was somebody standing in there, and the picture was taken from a little bit of distance, maybe a little bit out of focus, but it definitely looked like there was a figure in, in, in that doorway. I forgot what soul number it was now, and it was one of the, the very first, and I think it was actually an opportunity uh, picture uh, from the row opportunity. I remember that, and I looked into those gigapans that he has made, and that caught my interest so much, because this guy, Neville Thompson, had made it so easy to sit and look for all these anomalies on these uh, pictures coming back from the rovers on Mars, uh, opportunity, spirit, curiosity, uh, and even the uh, 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 Mars orbiter uh, so that are going there. There are quite a few that has been around and their satellite images came down as well and he made them available on Gigapan. So we didn't have to search, make advanced complicated search on NASA sites and download big files and it was just, that was just what we needed, and, and that kind of activated me, and I got my interest, and I started. Um, I have to tell that when I did that, I had just been through an operation with my ears. Uh, right. So I was going home for three months, and I had nothing to do, except I had a good computer, and, and, and now I had Gigapan. So I went off 
med det skal ikke for 3 months and started finding anomalies and I got more and more dragged sucked into it uh, and found there's a lot of work to that because I, I did it for probably a year and, and you've done it for a long long time and to actually find some of the findings that are not just you know a uh, a rock that looks like a face but to find something that looks quite unique and looks like it's got um structure to it in, an intelligent structure yeah. and i've seen so, uh, there's quite a lot of stuff on your channel that you find uh, i think some of your findings as well have made it to the papers yeah there has been uh <laughs> there has been made <laughs> a few articles so we have been in, in 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 washington's post and i think that bbc used a picture once and we have been we have been everywhere on all the uh, internet tabloid and uh, people has literally jumped over some of the pictures we we found in, in in the beginning and posted them all over and them they, some of them went viral uh, pictures of uh, what looks like a little wall and pictures satellite pictures of what like a giant construction on Mars uh, uh, that was later presented on uh, uh, a conference in Los Angeles Expo in Los Angeles um, by somebody else that gave the full credit uh, for it and that was an amazing feeling to see this these famous guys standing there with your works your picture. And, and and putting them up, that um, it, it gives you some kind of kick, and you wanna move on. You wanna come on. Let's find some more. These guys liked it. It's going viral. It's going crazy, and people are stealing it, putting it on their YouTube channel. Somebody even steals the picture and brush out the name on it and or the logo and say, "Look what I found." And we, we we've been through it all. But yeah. yeah, I mean that's one thing I respected with uh, Security in Ten is he, you know, as much as some people might say some a lot of bad stuff about him. I mean, I'm good friends with with him, but it, I remember when he put some of your stuff on and he gave full credit to your channel. Um, and it, I can't, what was it? I can't remember what he featured now of yours, but he featured some. What was it that he featured? He might have featured a few things of yours actually on there. Yeah, I think he has featured uh, a, a few uh, Mars uh, pictures and videos that, that that we made over the years. Uh, it's hard to tell now because he's got no videos up, so I yeah, can't it's, go it's, back and look at that. <laughs> I, I remember one specific, it was a, a satellite picture, the same one I just talked about that Mike uh, Barra presented on the uh, Expo Live conference in Los Angeles. Uh, um, uh, that one, oh, let me hang on. Uh, for a second, I think I've got so many SOL, no SOL numbers and <laughs> orbiter numbers in my head. Sometimes it's 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 kind of complicated to find the right numbers. But yeah, if you send me after the after we've done the Skype, I can put some clips of it in in the video. But I do think yeah. I know what you mean. Uh, I think I might have even talked about that before. Did Will Will from Will Farrell did did it, did he do something on it as well? Will Farah and and um, uh, us, me uh, and Dolly and the whole UFAT team, we have shared a lot of stuff and we always said to each other, we don't mind who's uh, found we'll it, or, but it. let's keep us dig into it and let's get different views views on it. The more that are looking at the same anomalies and can give different pictures and the better, the better. That's what we always been saying. Uh, so yeah. So one of the amazing things about yourself that i just thought wow this this is it this 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 guy is kind of really onto something is when the the baltic anomalies uh, <laughs> the baltic anomaly kicked off and you did that amazing documentary where uh, you you actually got me on for a for a little clip and i had no idea what i was talking about <laughs> but um i remember that yeah yeah the unsolved mystery what spiked your interest with the Baltic Sea? Uh, how long time have you? To, two hours, three hours? Or shall I come with the short version? I think that the, if I start from the beginning, in 2009, eight or nine, I had this weird dream and I remember it. I was out with somebody, we were diving and we went down to this object that was not a normal, it wasn't a rock. Uh, and I remember I saw this object while diving and, and then I kind of woke up and, and forgot about this dream. But I remember what I saw when I was diving. And uh, that was, yeah, in 2009, yeah. And then in 2011, 
CNN just suddenly uh, sent, uh, I think it was a live feed from somewhere with the Baltic Sea anomaly that divers have found something that looked like the Millennium Falcon uh, on, on a sonar scan from the um, from uh, 86 meters below the surface uh, of the waters between uh, Sweden and Finland, just above the uh, Gotland Islands. Uh, and I remember that and, and I looked at that and it was kind of, it was an uh, animation they had put up and it was not the, the right animation, it was an animation of the Millennium Falcon. Looked at that, so that was interesting. <clears throat> So they um, had a Facebook group. So I found Ocean Explore on uh, Facebook and joined the group uh, right away, <laughs> more or less. And uh, this uh, guy that uh, later has become a very good friend of mine, uh, Hauke Wacht uh, from Portugal, had made this um, painting uh, picture of what the divers has uh, described. He's been sitting and listening to the divers, like describing the colors, the edges, uh, the corners, everything. And he had made, a, I think you call it a phantom uh, uh, a drawing of it and posted it. And, and when he posted that on Facebook, I, I remember what like, I got goosebumps. That was, that was the thing I saw in that dream in 2009. And that really, really kicked me and uh, uh, started uh, joining Active into the group and participating in the debate of what thought or thoughts of what it could be. Uh, and I remember at that time I, I was 100% uh, sure it was a UFO. I'm not today, but that's another thing, but uh, we take that later. But but uh, I remember posting post about this could be a UFO and, and, and it was so interesting and we should dig into it. Um, I joined them and uh, I became good friends with them. I actually met some of the, I met the whole team in Stockholm. I've met them two times and we've been out uh, doing uh, interviews with them as well and uh, having a nice long conversation over a few beers in a bar and got a few secrets uh, of what uh, was going on and what is going on and what's, go on, what's gonna go on in the future. So, so, so the research is still going. The research is still going on, and uh, I remember I made the unsolved mystery. And at that time in 2015, everything that was collected as evidence and material at that time was what I basically also used to present in, in the documentary with pictures, sonar scans, and what people talked about. And now it's actually about three or four years since I made that documentary. And the stuff that has come in since is amazing. For forget, I, 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 I tell everybody, go watch the documentary, uh, The Unsolved Mystery. Uh, you can find it on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Uh, there are two episodes, there's one covering the Ocean Explore team when they're uh, out there diving and, and we talk to them and we hear them, each one of them, what they're thinking about it. And then there's the second part where uh, people from uh, around the world, uh, there's a uh, researcher, so, uh, scientists uh, and UFO enthusiasts, everybody gives their, their bet on what it could be down there. What's that? But I guarantee you the next documentary that's going to come out about the Baltic Sea anomaly will be much, 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 much better and contain much, much more new info. Are you making that documentary? I am going to make exactly as uh, I did with the Unsolved Mystery, an independent documentary and I am going to use, we are going to use, uh, Dolly and I, my wife, are going to go to uh, Sweden and make an interview with them whenever it will fit into our, our calendar within the next few months here, because we are going to, to Sweden anyway soon here. And we are going to follow up on everything what's been going on since we made the documentary and put all the new evidence and material, uh, videos, and whatever we can get our hands on into that documentary. So that would be in about a year and a year and a half and, and the next one would be out. So a lot of people were speculating that, you know, in the documentaries that it could be something ancient. Some people yeah. said uh, a, a crashed um, craft of some, some mm -hmm. kind. Um, do you have any kind of, is there anything you can say on what, what you know that it, that it, that it is or? Well, it yeah. isn't. <laughs> you see, <laughs> like a sneak peek. Yeah, we have. We already started the process of, of of collecting information for the next documentary, and 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 I know I really want to support you, Oliver, and I love your channel, 
Uh, but if I give out all the information right here, right now, I guarantee you I'm going to sit yep. in uh, SHIC back, T back uh, yeah. uh, later tonight here. Uh, but what I can say will be that it's not a rock. I cannot believe in any second after everything we've been through since 2016, after the documentary, that it's a rock anymore. It is very interesting and there is new uh, information, uh, data, pictures. Coming. We are not, uh, Dolly and I, Mars Moon Space TV or Forbidden Olives have, uh, are not in control of anything of what's come out. Uh, it's all up to the Ocean Explorer, whatever the, they are going to release. And then it's good to be good friends with the whole team. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe that you'll probably get the exclusive rights to. There so. are um, uh, TV stations, uh, for what I know, that are working with them right now to make a, a, a documentary as well. And uh, so people are investing money into uh, this. That people are interested. It's uh, those uh, production companies that have contacted them so far. Uh, no, it's not something that they get for free. It costs a lot of money. The fuel alone to go from the harbor uh, with the ship to the anomaly is twenty-five thousand dollars. Wow. You ain't getting anything bad. You, you ain't gonna dive down, pick up a chest of gold and, and sell it at uh, Kirsty's auctions for a million dollars. You ain't getting anything but pictures and the fame. Well, so the question is... Gonna go in back and forth, back and forth, back and forth for, no. for nothing, you know. It's... So, so the thing is, uh, who will invest in paying that kind of money? And I, I can tell you so much that going out there will cost more than $250,000. And that would be... Um, a cheap tour that would not be with uh, everything needed. That would be with the essential equipment and not the best of the best, you know. So uh, when they dive down there, uh, it takes, when they get to the bottom, they have about 15 to 20 minutes of timing time because the time to get up during to decompression uh, is about two, uh, one and a half hour, one to one and a half hour. So the amount of equipment the divers need to wear is in almost their, their weight, uh, body weight are more than triple when they're wearing their equipment as well, uh, oxygen tanks and so on and so on. So to go out there, send divers down, you need to send minimum two divers down at the time, uh, with cameras and, and you have this ROE as well. So, so with two divers down, you get 15 to 20 minutes which would be 30 to about 40 minutes. That, that can't time. be much filming time or much no. research time. No, and if you don't know what you're going down to, you have like one or two meters visibility and you have to take it meter by meter and the object is 60 meters wide. You won't even have time to explore one tenth of the object in 40 minutes total research time. So when you go out there, you need to have a diving team, not just two, you have need to have four, six, eight. If you really want to get a result right here, right now, if you don't, you will have to be out there for days and take 15, 20 minutes at the time, then wait hours and hours, take 15, 20 minutes again at the time. So the investment in, in getting an answer to what the Baltic Sea anomaly is, is enormous. Uh, divers aren't cheap and they all need full payment. And I don't think that there will come a team and say, we'll do it for free or anything. Uh, they need payment and a production company coming in to make something, uh, a direct documentary where they go with them on the ship and pay for it all. They would be standing with, with, with 500,000, maybe a million dollar bill after that. So guess who's gonna pay for that? Uh, it's, it's a hard task. But I can't reveal uh, anything about now about who's doing what right now. I can say there are somebody doing investment, and, and, and it's not Dolly and I. Uh, we are standing on the sideline with, with, with all the information we can get and, and, and all the pictures and videos we can get of the team that they want to release to us. That's what we can we can get. And then when they are finished, the other production companies, we can come and see what's what's going on, we can make our own independent doc documentary and Unsolved Mystery part three and four out of that. Some but, of the exclusive footage that they sent you uh, for the, the, the part one and part two documentary, yeah. I mean, yeah. you can see the visibility is 
it's hardly anything because it's that murky. How, how deep is it? Uh, it's estimated to be about 86 to 90 meters below the surface. Wow. So it, it's it's quite deep. It, it's it's not a sports dive or a scuba dive. A dive you're doing. It's a professional dive with professional divers and professional equipment. You you can't just go out there and go down to to those depths uh, if you're not a professional or know what you're doing. Do the, does the team have any competition? Do you know? Is anybody else trying to kind of beat them to the uh, to the treasure or where you know? <laughs> I think, and I'm not talking on behalf of the team, I'm talking on behalf of what I know from, from our history. Um, there was some other, another team that showed a lot of interest uh, in 2011, 2012, and 2013. But as I said, this minimum for a discount expedition, $250,000 with the right equipment. So pay $250,000 to go out and say, hey, we found it first, and now we know what it is. Uh, a professional, uh, no, I don't know how to say it. Uh, 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 um, timing company won't won't do that just to 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 go out and say we found that when they know they ain't getting any monetary back from it. It's it's pure fame and it's pure. It will be in the TV for sure. They will grab it again as soon as anybody get out there. No matter what it turns out to be, it 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 will generate some fame, and that's it. No money. Yeah, it's. I'm I'm excited to find out what it is. I mean, when so am I. So are we. It, it you know it seems like we sometimes we're more interested in what's up in 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 the stars when mm. we've got so much stuff underneath the ocean. <laughs> that, That's true. You know they, what did they say? That we've explored more of uh, space than we have our own oceans, or, or something like that. <laughs> I think we only explored about ten percent of our oceans. And we are already on our way again to Mars with a new and better rover. So I, did you watch that? I did, yeah. I did. And it was amazing. And the rocket went into safe mode. And of course, the conspiracy starts right away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we learn and um, <clears throat> we waited a day and, and, and to read up what was going on. And it turned out to be a temperature difference uh, between two body parts of the rocket that activated an, uh, a sensor. That made you must it. be very excited about another rover going on Mars. I am. I am. It is. A, it is. Uh, when this rover come up, compared to the to the other rovers that have been there, like um, the first rover they sent up there, the the little one. Oh, I even forgot the name of it. That's almost embarrassing. But that was kind of like Spirit rover. Uh, no, not Spirit. The one before them. But that was kind of like. Uh, an old 4T, and then we came with Spirit and Opportunity. Right. Then we were up in, 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 in the 80s, Ford Escort. We are driving in here if you compare it to a car. <laughs> then came Curiosity. That's that's a really, really, really nice, expensive Volkswagen. Now we have Persever Perseverance. Perseverance, yeah. <laughs> if I can say it, that's the sports one. That's the Lamborghini. That's the Ferrari of, of, of rowers, you know, with all the best equipment, the, the top of the top. So yeah, it's gonna be exciting to see what they're gonna find on Mars with, with with that new rover and especially the helicopter, the little. Yeah, I was uh, gonna say that it's, got, it's part of my French, but it's got a fucking drone. Yeah. On board, yeah. you know? But but listen to this. We're talking about the helicopter on the on the rover. Here starts uh, here begins the conspiracies already because if you read on the data sheets on it, it says it has batteries for about four to five minute flight. And then it will have to fly back again and recharge. And this is where I am really, really wondering with the best technology in the world, they're putting up in a rocket and sending it to Mars and they put a battery on a helicopter that lasts four minutes. Um, Something is not, uh, not quite right. Uh, you, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, yeah, because, I mean, we've got drones now. You can buy a drone that will last, yeah. what, uh, yeah. 30, 30 minutes. Yeah. Can you buy, I don't know, do they do ones probably for an hour now, yeah. if you pay enough money? I know, I know they do a 30-minute one. Exactly. So I definitely know that. Exactly. But, uh, exactly. And, and, and the conspiracy in this uh, begins with, is it true or does the battery have a longer uh, lifetime and we're just not aware of it so they can cut it off after four or five minutes and see that's it that's it cameras up the drone is flying back now well that would make sense you see that would make sense if there's something to exactly. uh, 
Hi. So we're being told that this helicopter, this little uh, RC helicopter, uh, can fly more than four minutes, but I, I don't think that would be the uh, the case in this case. I think that's. that's so this little helicopter, I've forgotten the name of it, but this is going to go. It, it it gets is it detached from the bottom of the rover, and and then it, it, the rover then moves. So it's underneath the rover. It's underneath the. Uh, perseverance i believe and then uh, it leaves the helicopter the helicopter then takes off um it and it, is it going to be filming Do it bring it set it, it, yeah it, the the whole idea about the helicopter is to um, uh, look over the area to find out which way they can navigate the rover they're looking, we're using it as a kind of, uh, they have nav cams on the rover and it's basically a flying nav cam from the rover. They can plan their route after, see which way we can go to what, what looks interesting in, in, in the distance, where should we go? Oh, and of course it, it could be you and can and will be used when they see something on, on the mass cam, for example, in the distance. What would be more perfect than to send up the little helicopter and have a four minute video of something far away in the distance with some of the best cameras in the world mounted on the flying helicopter. Do you, th do you think the quality that we're going to get back is going to be a lot better than what we get from Curiosity? I mean, some of the yeah. Curiosity pictures are fantastic, don't get yeah. me wrong. Um, but, you know, are we going to see things in true colour? Because we don't really see Mars uh, in true colour, do we? I think we are getting to a point where we are try where we are going to see the true colors slowly seeing the true colors. I remember a lot of the pictures that came out. Uh, I think it was from the Hubble telescope in 90, 98, 96 or something uh, where we have a picture of Mars just as blue as planet Earth. And then 10 years later, five years later or later, they have a picture of Mars all red. Uh, so I definitely think that's the conspiracies again. I think we are led to believe something else than the truth because it's easier for them to handle whatever the truth is as long as we don't know the truth. If we can believe something else, that's not red, uh, that's not blue, that's red. Okay, if it's red, then there's no life and water like on Earth. Let's look somewhere else. Let's look at, uh, what's the next one? Let's take Jupiter this time. Let's look at Jupiter, you know. Uh, I think they are trying to manipulate people uh, to believe something, to make it easier for themselves to keep the secrets there are. Because I do believe we have life on Mars. And 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 I remember when they said there was no water on Mars, but there were ice caps on both North Pole and South Pole and Mars. And they remember they said there was uh, You've been always- You've saying that for years. You've been saying this. Yeah, and, and they said the temperature was constantly minus. And then the rover uh, Curiosity came up when there was a temperature field around and it was like from, minus 18 degrees in the evening to plus <laughs> 31, 48 in, in daytime. So so that cold, cold, dead planet that was in minus degrees all the time wasn't just suddenly minus degrees all the time. It was flourishing like Earth is day and night, up and down and so on and so on. Uh, I think we are, they have been trying to make us believe a lot of things to make it easier for themselves to keep the secrets because whatever secrets are up there would be chaotic for humankind to know if humankind is not ready for it yet. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I, I have I've, I've seen lots of Mars image, images that some of them look like they've been, they've, something's been covered up, but I don't know if they're, they're uh, what they call the artifacts, the image, just image artifacts. Yeah. Or that there's been active like Photoshop jobs. Do you believe that NASA actually gives us these images that have something hidden in them and co and covers them up, or just doesn't show us the images, or shows us an image? I know I'm giving you a lot to think about here. <laughs> or shows us an image, but thinks they'll never work out what that is. I have, let me say, so Dolly and I have two good friends. Um, they're both uh, well known. The one is Ken Johnston. Um, that used to work with the Apollo team. Uh, the other one is Donna Hara, that used to work at Johnson Space Center, where they had um, all the uh, pictures from the Apollo mission coming in. 
and those two actually met uh, there at the Johnston uh, Control Center, Space Center. Donna Hara has been um, interviewed a million times because she was that person that came into the room where they were actually editing the lunar pictures that came from the Apollo missions. And she also said that, yeah, they were brushing out objects flying in the air, sitting there doing paintbrushing, old fashioned style in the 60s and 70s, old fashioned style, paintbrushing it all out, taking new negative pictures of the paintbrush, release them. Ken Johnston confirmed the same. Ken Johnston uh, had all the images from the Apollo missions. Um, there were, that was back at the time where they were printed in five folders with five copies with all the original images copied to each folder, nothing done to them. When they went to do all the images digital, he was ordered to take all five folders with pictures and destroy them because now it was your digital. Ken Johnston got rid of four of them and saved the fifth for what, 20, 30 years, 40 years. Wow. And came out with them a few years ago. I have the whole collection. I've been going through most of it and I can spend hours and hours and hours and go through um, most of it. And if you have two computers, you can have two full screens up. I would recommend to go find Ken Johnston's uh, collections on the internet. It's on Flickr also. Go find NASA's uh, 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 PIH catalog or um, uh, ECA catalog and compare them on two screens at the same time. It took us less than three pictures to find the first picture where there were actually stars on one picture and the same stars, some of them were gone in the next picture and that was exactly the same picture. So, so the thing is, was that stars that was removed from the original folder that Ken Johnston had that wasn't appearing on the NASA images or was it something else that probably would be on another place in the next picture frame? Then you start looking at the next 10 picture frames and you do find that in most of them, some of the stars are just suddenly missing. It's the same picture. The one is just digital. The other one is the original from the folder that Ken Johnston had. So yeah, to answer your question about NASA, do the uh, office do do the do they hide stuff? Do they blur them out? Yeah, big time, <laughs> big time. That's what makes it fun to sit and look after stuff because you know you can believe you can control the world but believe in something and the actual reality is two different things. You can control the whole world. NASA slips off from time to time. We have at UFA, United Family of Anomaly Hunters, thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures of anomalies found by anomaly hunters from NASA's pictures, both from the moon, from Apollo images, from spirit and opportunity, curiosity, ESP images, high resolution, uh, uh, images from the satellites, uh, the Mars orbiter, so on and so on and so on. Uh, even Venus and Jupiter and, and other planets are, are, are the anomalies found out from some of our UFAM members. And yeah, I remember NASA that, was, yeah. if NASA was perfect and, and, and they could do their job 100%, we wouldn't have anything to do here. But as I said before, you can believe you control it all. The more you believe you control it all, the more you're going to lose it. It is, it, it is strange to me that when you've got like um, people who, like Buzz Aldrin, who is very, you know, he, he, he loves NASA. I love Buzz. You know, love I, Buzz. I love Buzz. He you loves Buzz. Me, he, love I would Buzz. love to meet him. I'd like to have a drink with him. Never mind. I'd, yeah, it'd be oh. a dream to interview the man, but yeah. that's never going to happen in this lifetime. <laughs> but to have a drink with him and just ask him some of those, yeah. you know, Private. see, yeah. one to yeah. one. Yeah. He said there's on Phobos. Uh, that there is a um... monolith, yeah, and we have presented various images of that monolith, and that is a monolith that if uh, humankind woke up and got back to reality and and gave things a second thought, hey, what's that? And actually looked at the pictures instead of just dismissing it without even looking at it, they would be able to see that there is something there that is not natural created rock that points up like that and creates that shadow that you can see on the satellite images. And that shadow actually tells us it's it's a very, very tall, we're not talking 10 or 20 meters, we are talking huge, we're talking 100, 100 meters tall, if not taller. 
Why do you think he chose to kind of mention that in that interview, though? Do you think it was because he just thought, I'm going to be, be a little bit cheeky and let something slip here? Or do you think NASA may have told him, look, we, we want you to talk about this. I uh, think... Just give them a little... <laughs> a little nipple. <laughs> I think... I, 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 love, I love Buzz. He's, a, he's, a, he's my favorite as astronaut, no doubt yeah, about it. Cool. I think that... Uh, I'm sorry, Buzz, if you hear that. I, I think that Buzz Aldrin is, is getting older, and, and uh, I think that he is um, getting to the uh, point that I've heard about a while ago that's called uh, if it point without saying the word. And I think he's just going to... Uh, slip slowly and uh, slowly give what we call a slow uh, disclosure, giving a little bit here and there. And and I do believe that when he came out with that monolith things on Mars, uh, he had a contract about lunar images, lunar expedition, and NASA's uh, contract with NATO regarding everything about Apollo. What happened like 20 years later, uh, pictures taken 15, 20 years later, he, he doesn't have any contract about being silent about. And I think that was what he was his uh, way of saying, yeah, there are things out there. I'm an astronaut. Uh, I've been up there. But here's another example. I cannot talk about what I've done, but here's something else I can talk about because it's already public. I think that was what was a uh, good old boss. Yeah, it, it gave me goosebumps when I heard that for the first time when he went, there's a monolith up there. Who put it there? God. Yeah. You and, know. And I'm still, uh, I'm still uh, thinking what happened when Buzz Aldrin went to Antarctica, and he was uh, rushed uh, to an emergency hospital, and and what was it he was tweeting about on uh, Twitter? He said it's pure evil down there. Yeah, what did they get? They, they all went out. To, yeah. A few of them went to Antarctica mm. to meet up, and it was for some yeah. strange. What was the reason? Now I can't remember. <laughs> I, I I am not quite. I, I can't remember. It's, it's a if while. If I find out, I'll put I'll put the reason why up now. Was a public something going on? Yeah, uh, it's, it's just a, such a strange place yeah, to say. Yeah. Let's go to Antarctica. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to Antarctica and let's. Yeah. I think that the. Um, yeah. There'll be a flat earther typing now. You do realize that saying that they went to see the border. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, they will. They'll be typing right now. <laughs> probably, probably, yeah. Uh, we can control what they think uh, or do. <laughs> I love the flat earth. It's the well my channel. <laughs> so whatever they, they, they want to say, yeah. yeah. But again, yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting what's going on in that Antarctica as well. Uh, it's uh, apparently surrounded by secrets just like Mars is and Venus is and uh, a lot of other stuff is, uh, UFOs is. Uh, I think we've got a lot of connections from our ancient past and, and my, my, my beautiful wife can probably talk a lot about that uh, uh, ancient uh, history and, and, uh, and how it can be related to, to, uh, to Antarctica. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's you know what I I would love to hear. I would love to see somebody sit down with Elon Musk and say, "There's what's going on with why? I, are you going to put a rover on Mars? Are you going to show us what's on Mars? Do you think that man thinks there is something on Mars?" You know, what? Yes! I, you can hear my Hello, wife Dolly. in the background. And you know what? I was just about to say, write your questions down. I will give them to Dolly and she will ask Elon Musk. Elon Musk. First time possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I think, you know, Elon, I think he definitely, he knows something. Whatever it is that's going on, that man knows about it. I think he knows the score completely. He knows a lot. He tweeted the other day that aliens built the pyramid. Yeah, aliens built the pyramid. He tweeted. Did he? Yeah. Yes. I Check need to see out. that tweet. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. Just and one I moment. Think... Let me just shut this door. We're just getting a bit, a little bit of background. Yeah. Okay. I love it when an interview starts getting crazy. <laughs> yes, so so Elon Musk has put a tweet out saying that aliens built. Tw is this one? Is this like a classic Elon? Uh, you know, it's not a classic Elon. I wouldn't describe it as a classic Elon, but we're not surprised at all, because if you are running a space agency like that and are running Mars missions and and uh, Starlink missions and all that all that stuff, you got a have 
you got to have knowledge about what's going on out in space. You ain't just gonna uh, send a lot of people to Mars. Hey, there's a planet. Let's go out there. We know nothing about it, but let's colonize it and uh, let's let's get up there. Uh, we already have a rover up there. Let's send us some beautiful picture. There's nothing up there. Let's go. You would never ever do that without having a probably background uh, knowledge about Mars, about space, a proper research. Elon Musk has very uh, uh, much been uh, enlightened in in some of the um, big questions about what's going on in space before he would be able to have a, a Mars mission in and space. What's on Earth. And what's happening on Earth? My wife is uh, telling me here what's happening on Earth. Yeah, and Elon Musk have a lot of knowledge. I don't think he know everything, but he know what's essential for him to know to do what he's doing about life in the universe, life on other planets. Yeah, I, you know, I just, I'm just waiting for that tweet, you know, that just sends the world crazy. Did you see the, the, the New York Times article the other day, mm. uh, where they said oh, that, yeah. they said that, that, that something was going to get released from the Pentagon, and apparently they have off-world craft. It's been retracted now completely. Yeah, little... but, but, yeah, that, that, yeah, and they keep coming up with it. We knew it. We've known it for years. And and the way it comes out, like Pentagon releases news about uh, off-world uh, uh, vehicles uh, or craft. Yeah, it's been going on for years. It's what we call a, 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 a slow, silent, uh, soft disclosure. Yeah, it's, it's coming out. Uh, but at the same time, it's sometimes being presented as a kind of a little like with a laugh, uh, a blink with an eye, even in when you read the articles, uh, you know what I mean? Still trying to, to leave a back door open to, to get out of if, if, if hell breaks out, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. So, it, so, so they'll test the waters and then if, if they, they feel oh, actually, no, yeah. let's retract that. Or they just test it and they have every intention of retracting it. They just want to see like an experiment. Basically. Yeah, ex exactly, exactly, yeah, exactly. Interesting. It's interesting. It's very, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, so perseverance. How long? How long before perseverance lands? Oh, I think it's gonna land. Oh, it's uh, boom, 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 boom. It's gonna land in twenty one. It was it in February? I think it was February. Uh, it's gonna land on the 18th of February. Yeah. Yeah. I cannot so, wait for them. First I can't wait either. It's gonna be exciting. Uh, 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 we at Forbidden Knowledge TV are definitely gonna cover both the landing and all the first 100 pictures coming out in daily videos. Is that gonna be quite? You're gonna be quick to the mark with that. So you're gonna. We are gonna. Pump it up to the to the max, and 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 the first months we will be pumping almost nothing out but perseverance. Well, pitch. the link to Videos. that will be in the description anyway, because I'm going to put the two Baltic anomaly uh, yeah. documentaries in there on forbid forbidden knowledge yeah. TV, yeah. so they will be in the description anyway, so yeah. pe people can look forward to seeing um, your your coverage of the perseverance landing. Um, exactly. I. I They've sent that out for for one reason and one reason alone. That is to find some kind of life on Mars. In that in that they believe that that crater had water in it. Yeah. But surely NASA already knows that there's life on Mars if they're coming yeah. up these images. I think it was was it a. Uh... They had a rover up that had a little arm on in the, in the 90s that was digging in the soil and uh, hit ice like 10 centimeters underneath the, the so, surface. So both you and I and many of us believe that something's been covered up on Mars. You know, they know something, something. has been covered up. They, they have been telling the truth all the while, but they haven't been telling the whole truth. The, so the truth is in plain shown, sight. When they are showing us pictures, they are showing us Mars. That's the truth. But it's not the whole truth because they're not showing us everything. Some uh, of my subscribers hate me for this as well. They're like, no, don't, don't, don't show the Mars images, Ollie. It's just a rock. I'm like, no, it's not a rock. That's not just a I rock. Know, I know. 
and 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 the hard thing about anomaly hunting and, and we experienced that uh, with the UFAP group as well and and page and members is that there are a lot of people who want to join in everybody's welcome we 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 urge people to come on in, come on, join us. Uh, we have the UFAP uh, group now on, on Facebook where you can post your findings uh, together with, with the UFAP members. Uh, but there are some between uh, that, I don't know how to say it. It, 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 it don't look credible when they are presenting the- yeah. the, 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 the wear and stuff. I, I, did I say that? Did I say that? Uh, it, <laughs> It does become too blurry. Personally, what interests me on Mars is when we're looking at clear pictures and you can see signs of structures or artificial uh, carved rock or things that doesn't look natural created. Um, me personal, I'm not looking for a little man or, or beings on Mars on, on, on curiosity images because if there was any life up there, they wouldn't have seen curiosity there knowing that uh, millions and millions and millions of people are going to look at those pictures every day and boom, we're going to be busy hiding all the stuff. No, they would sent them to an area where they could quiet for themselves, go around, take pictures of an empty day, so blah, 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 so on, so on, and so on. I think that there are more on Mars made by humans than what we are paying for uh, via NASA. And, and I, to be honest, I think the Curiosity rover is, is placed in that area specific to take the eyes of the public up for what's real going on. People will be looking at Curiosity Row and say, this is Mars, this is what all of Mars looks like. No, this is not what all of Mars looks like. If this is planet Earth, then we are looking at something uh, on size as Disney World in France. Yeah. That's the yeah. area we are looking at. Uh, and if you landed in Disney World in France uh, as a little alien, would you believe that the whole world looked like this, full of... Uh, uh, Things to try. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like you, if you look around Disneyland, and then you 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 look around China, uh, theme park in China, yeah, exactly. it's totally different. Exactly, exactly. Uh, but but what I was trying to say is, I think uh, the rover was placed there on purpose to get our eyes to look at an area to make us believe this is what we are looking. This is what Mars looked like, and, and there's nothing really up there because then they can operate with all the satellites, take all the secret pictures of areas and, and start planning colonizing with, with Mars 1 in that area because there's something going on on the opposite side. We don't want to be too close to that area and so on and so on and so on. There's so much going on we, we don't know about and I still think that it's like, yeah, if you are on Mars, if you are uh, on Venus, uh, live there as an uh, on Venus you know, and, and, and wanted to send a mission to Earth and you don't want to show too much because you know all of the inhabitants on Venus were going to see all the pictures. You would probably choose a place like Sahara, send the so rovers out there, Venus make all like... the pictures public and then make the orbiters take all the good pictures of all the other places you want to look at. Isn't Venus like toxic though? It's like, you know, its atmosphere is just... Uh, yeah. Uh, it's and got lakes it's... of... What's the lakes made out of Venus now? Uh, like massive lakes of something. They, they uh, yeah, yeah, but they say the temperatures on Venus are what was it like? Very, very high, and uh, the uh, the little lander that Russia uh, sent it up to Venus uh, stopped working after I think it was a, a minute or two, forty-one seconds or a minute or two, uh, due to the heat. They say. The atmosphere is made mostly of carbon dioxide. Mm. So, my research primary has, has uh, there. my research primary has been on Mars. I have looked at a few pictures, but I haven't talked uh, very much into uh, Venus. Uh, I've been looking at, as I said, a few pictures, but my primary research has been on Mars and the Moon. Be yeah. yeah. our good friend Billy Carson knows a lot yeah, about Venus, lot. Be Venus, and have He's made videos. Structures. Yeah. He had he had pictures of uh, what structure. is believed to be structures on Venus that definitely not look uh, natural created, seen from satellite images. Of course, we don't have any rovers on Venus, for what we know. So, do you do you think most of the planets that have actual ground to them, um, possibly may have structures on them? Rock rock planets. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think. And and. <laughs> When we are looking out as human as human beings in the universe, we are looking for planets like our own, 
because we function with lungs, oxygen, water, air. This is how we function. So we are led to believe that this is how life in the universe functions, but we know nothing. We are just a tiny little fragment of, of a fragment of a fragment of a fragment of a tiny little part of the universe. So why does a planet need to be like ours to be inhabitable for, for beings? Uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah we, we, we always believe everything is like us. Everything, every aliens have two arms, two legs, two eyes, and, and, and they probably look like us. And if they are not looking like us, they're probably reptilians, but still with two legs, two arms, and, and two eyes, and a nose, and a mouth, and control. This is what we are led well, to. The be- dinosaurs kind of froze that out of the water, though, because Earth had a lot more, was it a lot more gravity back in the day? It's a, a lot less, was it a lot less gravity? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not into that. Kind of, had, so that's why the dinosaurs were so big. Yeah, gravity in, 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 the, uh, in, in that time, that's what I've led to believe, too. Uh, and that could be a good reason for why the, the, uh, the size of the dinosaurs. Yeah, There's also. a planet with water on it, and it's like, what, 10 times the size mm-hmm. of Earth? Mm. How big are those creatures? Going? Exactly. Another good example is uh, Mars has a less um, um, uh, gravity than planet Earth. Sorry, I have to find all the words in English. Mars have uh, less uh, gravity than, than Earth has. And if you look back to ancient history and hear about Anunnaki and, and uh, Nephilim and giants, coming from 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 other elsewhere from from heaven it, you just mentioned it yourself with the dinosaurs uh, if there were less gravity they would probably grow bigger and i think that's the same thing we have been seeing on, on mars and other planets uh, less less gravity and that's why what who lives up there probably would be bigger uh, physically than, than we are as human living on earth and this is why i sometimes think sometimes think that we in ancient history hear about giants coming from uh, outer space, uh, uh, Nibiru, uh, Planet X, you can give it many names, uh, Anunnaki history, go research it in, in Anunnaki history on uh, on Facebook. My wife knows uh, 10 times more about Anunnaki history than, than, than I do. Uh, when she you say would, Nibiru, though, you don't yeah. mean like a planet that, that's coming to destroy us. You just mean that there may be another planet that we don't know about. Uh, it's a planet that's crossing, and and uh, I'm a uh, I'm I'm a bit tired of all those uh, conspiracies about Ooh. Nibiru is going to crash into us and destroy it's us. Not. It's 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 a fear. It's something yeah, that people totally used to agree. put fear it's into not. people and believe in it. And as soon as you think, oh, what's going on? You're actually going to click on that article and, and and probably share it to something else. And those people behind think, oh yeah, fear works. We're getting paid for ads, and we can then let them walk around in fear and believe in this and that. It's kind of the same with with Corona. I don't know if it's wrong to say, but I, I the, said the population, it's, it's dangerous. Uh, you need to wear a mask. Everybody goes out and buy a mask because you're being told it, it's uh, what you need. But in reality, if you look up the mask and, and you look videos up uh, about coronaviruses and mask, if the mask doesn't really help you because you're still... Yeah, we'll, we'll stay off the coronavirus. Yeah. Not good for YouTube. <laughs> 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 but it's funny you should say that about uh, Nibiru because back in 2012, and this is true story, my friend, my friend, my friend came came round here and we had a few beers in the kitchen, uh, and he started crying and I said, "What's wrong with you?" And he's like, and I thought it was like something personal, like his his wife had been cheating on him or something like that. No, he'd been watching conspiracy videos about Nibiru and the world that was going to end, and his <laughs> and, you know, his, his two children uh, were, you know, had only just come into this world. I'm like, you're an absolute prick. No, 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 no. And that's what we call fear posts. Yeah, and, and and we don't approve them either in 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 any of our groups on Facebook. We we avoid them. We want to keep them out of our yeah, group. That's we great. Don't, Feed, we don't want to feed any kind of fear to people uh, to believe something that ain't true or to believe they can get well by buying something or doing something that one way or another are going to cost them money uh, or, or somebody else is going to gain uh, anything out of it. You know what I mean? You you must get, though, um, when you over the years when you've been running Mars, Moon, Space TV, you must get a lot of, um, like... Uh, 
people that are very religious coming on and saying, well, this, you know, what you show, and that's this is no disrespect to anybody that's religious, but my question to you, Thomas, is um, with everything you believe and um, that the the planets have the, the the whole universe and our our galaxy, you know, the solar system is possibly has life on other planets. Um, where does God fit into all this? God. I, I wish you had believe, asked me if I believe in God. Well, that's what I'm kind of asking. Uh, but uh, I don't believe in God, not as we are told, not as we've been told from, from school and, and childhood. And I think God is a, a wrong word, is a misinterpretation uh, that has came up. Uh, and again, uh, my wife could probably talk 10 times more about it than I can if we go back to Anunnaki history and, and you say the word gods, where they're really gods are where they're just beings from another place with way more knowledge than we have technology. Go back to 1800-something. Uh, take, uh, take a modern flashlight like this one you, you have for a camera that I'm using here. Show them that, and they would be thinking that's that's a divinal instrument he has. He's got to be, it's got to be something special. That's technology we don't know. We don't know how to control it. Let's let's get afraid of it, or let's fight him. Or he's, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, see, this always brings me round to the question of conspiracy, not conspiracy. Sorry, um, disclosure. And part of me wonders why. It wonders if. A lot of it may fall apart if people think that there, you know, that maybe there's nothing after death. You know, the universe is absolutely teeming with life. You know, there's nothing special about uh, this little pearl <laughs> in our solar system. You know, what if there is nothing? And I know this this interview's gone a bit strange right now. But yeah, that's this cool. Is what Bring it on. But, but but you know, maybe that's why they don't want to kind of give us disclosure because people people's beliefs may change why as my wife say why feel what you don't know well if people may fear if there's nothing after death you know mm. people 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 <laughs> might not be you might not be able to control people well enough i i must admit if, if you uh, said to me ha, 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 i don't believe there's anything after death I would be looking at you and I would be smiling and I would be saying to you, but I see you right here in front of me right now. Yeah, you would probably say, but you wouldn't understand what I meant. You are here in front of me right now and you're saying there's nothing after death. death. Where were you before you came to death? this body you have now? And you would probably be saying, I wasn't anywhere. I just just created and I came to this body and I became intelligence and oh okay, okay. But but the, the matter of fact, what I'm trying to say, you are here in front of me right now, which right now, which means you're alive. You can't be alive if you haven't been dead. Yeah. Think about that. You can't be alive if you haven't been dead. You can't be in dead. You can't be dead if you haven't been alive. It's a circle. Everybody that is here present at this planet have been alive before. Somebody have no clue about it because they are close-minded, uh, uh, narrow-minded people that don't want to open the horizon, don't want to open their mind. It's their problem. But everybody that has been on this planet has been alive before. This is a part of the whole process. Uh, reincarnation, which is one of my favorite topics, <laughs> speaking of reincarnation. Yeah, my dad believes in reincarnation. Yeah, yeah. And so do I. We have so many people who have past life memories. We have uh, so many videos where people are explaining and, and giving a good uh, 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 research and explanation for why they believe this. There was this uh, boy from, uh, was it from Ireland or Scotland, uh, uh, here from England, <coughs> around here, that uh, remembered he was living in a house, a specific place. He was no one four or five years old. He could describe the house and they actually went like many hundred miles up to that city because he's been talking about that for years. 
and he guided them straight to the house and he found the house and they actually knocked the door and I remember he came in and he could point out his room and this and that and they found the history about the house. Everything that boy had told was real. They could confirm it about the people that lived there and how they died. He drowned. He drowned. He said, I drowned in my past life. We lived in that house and there was a sea at, nearby and there was a little bridge and, and we fell off. It was an accident. I hit my head and I couldn't breathe and we drowned. The you, people you probably can't see this. That house, I've got some goosebumps there. <laughs> the people that lived in this house at that time when they visited with the boy said, yeah, yeah, there was someone living here many years ago and there was a boy that lived here that drowned down on, on that uh, beach down here. And that bridge down here, that there was a bridge down there. It wasn't there anymore, but there was a bridge down there. He died. He drowned. Yeah, exactly as the boy said. So that's amazing that a little boy, four or five years old, can sit and describe a house many hundred miles away from where they are living. Describe the people that actually lived in the house together with him. Describe the area. And when they came to the area, he could even sit and say, you have to go that way and that way. And the house is around that corner. And there it was. And there are so many of those <clears throat> testimonies from people that that I really believe in uh, and, and normally you said that you hear the uh, truth from drunk people and children uh, if we leave the drunk people out uh, I believe in the children this kid here was telling the truth and we have yeah. many examples of kids telling about past life memories and where they have been living and so we have all been living for it before I, I, it's not something I believe it's not something I, uh, I think it's something I know because I have past life memories too. I can't sit and, and, and make a drawing and point out exactly what, when, where, why, and street and so on. But I have past life memories too from two, three, four different life. And I know I've been living a hundred, maybe thousand times before. Maybe not on this planet, but elsewhere. But I have been here many, many times before on this planet. And so have most of all of them that are down here. So when you ask me the, the question, do you believe in life after death? I look at you and say, you are here in front of me. Yes, I believe. In, it blow my mind, mate. Um, in terms of, like, what got you in, I know you saw that um, image on Facebook and that got you into the channel. Um, but have you seen things yourself? You know, have you seen, <laughs> have you seen many UFOs? Have you seen things that you just... Have you seen goats or anything like that? I, I, I have. When it comes to that, I've had an interesting life. Um, I've seen a lot. Where, where did it start? We probably should have started off with this, but, you know. <laughs> when did it start? I was two, three years old. The first time. Uh, I don't know if I want to dig into the, the childhood. Yeah, let's, let's just pop it out. I was uh, two or three years old the, the first time, and I remember every day for a, a period of a week or maybe a little bit more than a week, this entity came through the door to my bedroom where I was sleeping, and he was a very, very hairy man. If I would see the same man today, I would say it was like a wolf, a werewolf or something like that, but it wasn't. It wasn't. It was a, a being, not a wolf, but he was hairy, very completely covered in hair all over. He came in with his hand, put it on my tummy, down here, and he did something. I could feel he did something inside of me. I was paralyzed. I could see him coming Jesus through the door. He didn't open the door. He walked right through, and he did something. And and I was not old enough to explain to my mom uh, what was going on. As soon as he, he left again, and I came out of this paralyzed, uh, I was, of course, screaming for my mom. She came in, and I was just screaming, and she comforted me and put me back again, and I fell asleep. But it happened over a few times, six, seven, eight, nine times. And this is why I remember the picture of this being coming through the door, doing this thing kind of, uh, it didn't hurt. It wasn't painful. Uh, it was go to the dentist and get some anesthetics and you can feel him pulling your tooth, but it don't hurt, but you can feel he's doing something inside of you. It was kind of the same feeling for my tummy when I was uh, that age. And that was the first experience I have that I actually remember. Uh, and it's not something like a dream that I had once that have took over. It was something that occurred seven, eight, nine times in a row. And, and it kind of, at, at the end of it, I was basically just waiting for him to come so I could get some, you know, I, I knew he would come. And then when he finally didn't come anymore, it was, I don't know how to explain it. It was weird because I was, as I said, two, two and a half years old. I don't even think I was three years old at the time. But I knew that he has been there. He has done something 
but I wasn't old enough to, with words, speak or tell anybody about it or communicate about it. So it kind of kept it to myself. And when he was gone and didn't came back, my world came back to, to normal again. And I grew up with the memories of it. And I remember I told my mom about it later at an age of about four. Uh, I, I told her about it as well. And she was, of course, like, my mom is very spiritual and uh, is a healer and have worked with uh, spirituality, healing, uh, therapy, and so on and so on all her life. So, so she didn't dismiss anything. She was looking very, listening very interesting to, to everything I said. And that was you know, my... that reminds me of, you know, these, these, um, <clears throat> healer, these healers that can kind of, they almost do an operation mm -hmm. without... I'm not saying you were operated on, but, you know, because of the feeling of numbness, because you, I've had an operation where I've been awake and you kind of feel the pulling um, from yeah. inside, but you kind of, you feel the pressure, yeah. but you don't feel any pain. No, no. And it reminds me of those, um, and I don't know if, I don't know if there's any truth to what these healers can do, but I've seen some of these, some of the healers, and that people swear by that they have healed them from actually going yeah. inside their body through like kind of a massage mm -hmm. and healing. Mm. I have an experience with healing too, uh, and it was uh, I've been we were living living in our seventh house, second house in in the city called Kalambo in Denmark, and my mom was uh, with a man for many years. Thomas is from. Denmark, Denmark. Agents, if, if no, if no one's my accent, <clears throat> I am from Denmark. <laughs> no, joke aside. Uh, my mom has uh, had a, a partner. Jens Peter was his name. Uh, he was uh, 10, 15 years older, and my mom. And to be honest, it's, it's a part of the story because I never really accepted him because he wasn't my father, my real father. He was so much older, and very old school. But but I accepted him, but not really. So I was not interested in having him helping me with, with, with anything uh, at, at all, I remember. But I came to a day where I had a pain in my tummy. And my mom uh, couldn't do anything about it, and she wanted to take me to the hospital. Jens Peter was his name. Uh, he said, let me try some healing. And I was like, no, 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 I don't want anything. And my mom said, come on, let him try, let him try. And they worked with healing. I had, had their own clinic and had been working with it, uh, both of them for 20, 30 years. So they knew what they were doing. And I'll tell you this, he put his hand on my tummy and the pain I had disappeared within 10 seconds. 10 seconds, that was all it took. And I was so embarrassed because I wasn't very happy about uh, my stepdad. Uh, uh, I loved him, but uh, again, it was two sides and, and he just took my pain away like like that uh, so I had kind of like a, I had to eat all my words uh, about him and, and, <laughs> and thank you so much and that was so good and I have no idea what he did it took him like 10 15 seconds it was gone so that's, that's amazing. my experience with healing I bet yeah. that changed the relationship as well yeah. <laughs> I think maybe that was, that was the, a part of a higher plane to strengthen the relationship between us. <laughs> but so, yeah. So what else has happened then? Because it sounds like you, you, you said you, you said there's been a few <clears throat> things and yeah, you know. The, the... I, I I can tell you what I already told on on uh, videos and interviews before. Uh, I was uh, four years old, and I was crossing this road where we lived at our first house in Colombo. Um, I didn't look. Probably, apparently, and I got hit by a car and got knocked out and ended up underneath this car. Um, I was four years old, as I said, and uh, the, the view perspective from a four-year-old boy is, is very, very limited uh, in what's going on. What I remember was I li li laid under this car, but I was looking with my eyes. I couldn't move. I was paralyzed. I, I saw right through the car. I saw people, neighbors, the car, those that drove the car stood outside the car, almost in a ring around the car and trying to lift up the car, but they couldn't. And, and somebody was saying, no, no, stop. Wait till they come with a jacklift. And, and I was I was gone. I was gone, but I saw everything that was going on. 
and I heard like an out of body experience. So. Uh, it was kind of out of body experience, but I was still in my body. But I saw everything that was going on. I was kind of like looking through uh, the car. Uh, I think they called it X ray side. Uh, and it was kind of a weird thing because I was present outside and still being inside my body. And here's the thing that these two uh, small men in, in white dresses with helmets on stood next to my mom and was comforting her. And saying, so uh, don't worry, he's going to be OK. Don't worry, he's going to be OK. And she just kept ignoring them and they, they kept talking to her. We are going to get him out and, and we, all made it, we already made sure it's going to be OK. Don't worry, don't worry. And I remember I thought that my mom is pretty rude. She's just ignoring those nice guys that actually are standing there and trying to help her emotionally as, as well. <clears throat> and she didn't say anything to them. And they had these weird helmets on. And I remember after that happened. Sorry, uh, that weird one. They had weird white helmets on and, and were wearing weird white clothings on like kind of like a dress a little bit illuminating. Uh, uh, but remember, I was four years old when, when I had that experience. And at one time, um, um, the one of those two guys said to the other, can we take our helmets off? And the other guy said back, no, he's not ready for that yet. Don't do that. And they kept their helmets on. And, and I remember that so clearly. Now comes the next thing. The rescue team come. And I was still inside my body, having an out-of-my-body experience inside my body. It's hard to explain. And so they came with the jack lift. They lifted the car up and they pulled me out. When I came out from underneath the car, I was like um, this feeling of getting into my body again, like whew, being flushed in dizzy for a second, whew, what's going on here? And back to my body, I remember opening my eyes and I looked at my mom and I grabbed my mom and gave her a big hug. And I saw those two guys with the helmets on were gone. I said to my mom, where's the, the guys with the helmets? And she was like, what guys? Those two small guys, they were smaller than you. My mom is uh, not a tall um, person. My, my mom and Dolly is about the same height. Uh, and they were like a hit lower than my mom. So they had been about 130, 140 centimeters tall. Uh, and I just remember I said to my mom, but it was those guys in the, the white dress with the white helmets on. They were standing and talking to you. Why did you ignore them? They were being kind. And uh, what are you talking about? Someone, are you OK? You hurt your head. Come on, let's go inside. And I was more interested in finding out about those guys in, in, in weird dre uh, white dressing and <laughs> weird helmets. Did you I have to go to hospital? So, uh, say that again. Did you have to go to hospital? No, I didn't go to hospital. They drove me out and I had a few scratches. That was basically it. But I was knocked out for 45 minutes. What While year was this? I was knocked out for 45 minutes under that car. That was, uh, I was four years old. So that has been in 81. Oh, that, that's the 80s for you. You know, yeah. it's yeah, just a scratch. <laughs> but I do remember. Give him a cup of tea, he'll be fine. And getting older uh, and having these memories, you put two and two together slowly and you realize, whoa, 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 those guys you saw back then that time, there weren't something that wasn't there. They were there, but nobody else than me could see them. So who were those guys? Were they aliens? Were they small grace with help us on? Or were they uh, spirits, uh, what you call the guardian angels coming down in disguise not to reveal who they are or confuse me? Or, who were they? That was when I got out under that car. That was my big quest. Uh, I wasn't even worried about myself because I was okay. I was helping my mom. I was a bit scared of what was happening, but I was more interested in, in those guys. Uh, who were they? Because they took all my attention. They took all my focus because they, they were not like the others standing around. There. That's, so, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So that was four years old. Yeah. So we've gone to the age of four now. So how many hours? I don't know if I can remember being a child, you, you know, I, I, I get like little, but I suppose nothing like that. I mean, I died when I was a baby, yeah, apparently. I can't remember it. But, you know, it, it's um, to have a memory like that and mm -hmm. something like that that's just stuck with you for this long, you know, it it's I, a, you you don't remember dreams, do you? You know, it, there, there's... I... I... For some so reason, what I mean by that is when you're a child and you had yeah, yeah. like dream. There are you. certain dreams you remember, yeah. Uh, certain emotional dreams where you come in well, a kind of special uh, emotion, uh, uh, which is uh, 
related to sorrow or sadness uh, and, and you have these dreams where you hear music and the music makes you feel things that you haven't experienced yet and you can't explain it as a child. Uh, I remember we had a, uh, an artist in Denmark, uh, Bamses Vena. I don't know the English word for it. it would probably be Teddy Bear's friends. It's a, an, an adult band making uh, adult music, but they also make fun music and a little bit sarcasm, funny sarcasm yeah, from, yeah. from time to time. He made a, a specific song uh, about a girl that went in some specific tones that was a little bit sad and it was about losing and dying and, and, and not seeing the person anymore. And, and that kept playing in... in a few dreams I had two, three, four times the same song, and I remember sitting in the same chair at all all the dream all the dreams the same chair the same dream I had a few times in a row with that song playing in the background, and I was just over uh, what you call it overwhelmed with with feelings that you cannot explain as a four, five, six years old old kid feelings about love, life, and lose and let die and and so on and so on. Uh, uh, Adult feelings, uh, without going in too deep in yeah, it, yeah. Uh, and 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 that was pretty weird that 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 song could do that to my brain when I'm asleep and make me have Your the same brain, yeah. yeah and experience the same emotional feelings uh, to do with love that hasn't existed yet and so on and so on and so on. Uh, so yeah, I have had some pretty weird dreams. I have had many weird dreams. I don't think we got time enough today to go through uh, <laughs> oh, but I may have to back on so. for, to discuss some of your dreams you know yeah. I, I may even do, I may even do a a, a, a show dedicated to dreams because I, yeah, 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 I think, definitely think, think there's something to the dream world yeah. you know that people talk about these crazy yeah. dreams and a lot of them some 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 people's dreams tend yeah. to be kind of like you know like almost real yeah I they I mean, be, before so before I let you get off, um, have you had anything recently strange that's happened in terms of? <laughs> uh, I know Dolly has, and I know she's listening. For me and Dolly listen the same. How so? The, don't see the, the answer same uh, would would be yes, but but we have had a lot of things going on. Some of the things we have uh, experienced together. Was as you also told about in the last time when when we were on a in a hotel and we were lying in each bed in the, each side of the room and this light uh, kind of appeared and I sat up like that and remember looking at her but I was kind of like gone I was there but I wasn't there but I still remember what I was I wasn't in the capability to move or talk or do anything I was just observing and then back out again. So I, I I remember I remember that yeah and and that's we we have had some a few UFO sightings uh, not close uh, but we, uh, close enough to know that this is not a helicopter this is not an aeroplane this is uh, something else yeah. uh, going on uh, we have had a few of them uh, yeah and of course uh, before uh, I met uh, Dolly. Uh, I had had a few uh, UFO experiences in Denmark as well, and as a kid as well as seven, eight years old, uh, I remember the first clear one. I remember uh, seeing uh, basically right in, in, in front of me. Um, and the shelf version is I was walking home. Um, we had an area in basically in the middle of town called the uh, Cluster Ruin, the, the ruins of an old uh, castle uh, that's still there just next to the five tower uh, very famous uh, church we have in, in Colombo there's a, a ruin that you can actually, it's open you can walk around it there's plantations and uh, but all the walls are still there and next to the sidewalk was one of these walls and I was walking on the sidewalk and when I was walking this light came up from this wall and I was like what is that uh, looking up like Oh, I had no idea. I wasn't feeling scared or fearful. I was just looking at this light and it just hovered up from behind the wall to over to the sidewalk where I was uh, stopped like two meters in front of me, it was up in the uh, air hovering just uh, a few meters above the ground and it got more and 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 more bright and uh, expanded. Uh, it wasn't blinding me, but the light was so bright, but still not blinding. I, I can't ex explain about the light. It's kind of like a, this doorway kind of appears in the middle, this black square kind of appeared slowly in the middle and 
that's all I remember. And then I walked home. Uh, I remember I decided now it's time to go home and I went home. And uh, the first thing my mom said, where have you been? And I was like, well, been down at the radio station. There was a local radio station that has some kind of event where I was down at. I've been down at the radio station and just walk home. You should have been home two hours ago. And, it's like, but I, and I remember I walked 10 minutes before I had to walk because I want to be home in time. Uh, I had a little issue at that time of constantly coming like 10, 15, 20 minutes too late. My mom was a bit tired of it. So this time I was home before I came home two hours later. So what happens in, in those two hours? My mom asked, what have you been doing? I, I, I left I left 10 to 5 from, from the station. Yeah, but it's, it's 10 to 7 now. No, I just left and it's a like 10, 15 minute walk from the radio station home. And I explained to her, but, 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 but I saw this light at the ruins uh, downstairs, down the, the road. The, those ruins were just two, three hundred meters from where we lived. So walk from the ruin to my home was like two meter walk. Uh, and I explained to her, just as I have said now, there was this light coming up from behind the wall and it expanded and expanded and it kept shining on me. And, uh, and then I remember I walked home, that's it. And my mom was like, because she had had UFOs and uh, alien experience as well and i remember her saying whoa, uh, whoa, whoa. so your mum's experience my mom have experienced similar stuff as i have had with lights coming up like that hovering above you you've kept that one quiet thomas i have kept a lot of things quiet because in, in this world today it's so easy to get a stamp on your back saying idiot whatever uh, imagination, uh, dream guy, uh, don't listen to him, fake, that's just a story. But the thing is, when you know people will judge you like that, why go out and, and publish it? I have kept this to myself. Uh, first time I started talking about these things were in 2014. Uh, I pop, uh, first went public and told some of the things I've experienced. And, uh, I kept it to I myself. Don't you say much about this on Mars Moon Space TV? No, because I wanted a Mars Moon Space TV channel that was about Mars Moon and space, and not about Thomas Michael Jensen's experiences as a kid. Because I knew if I put them out as a part of Mars Moon Space TV, in the beginning people would be thinking, yeah, 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 yeah we ain't gonna watch anymore. Then he's just talking. When you knew that, when you know they get that stamp right away, you ain't gonna go out and say, listen to me, guys, I have a story to tell. I listen to me, and my story is better than all the others because. I ain't got any story to tell. I've got a life experience to tell. I know what happened to me. To me, it's important that I know the truth when everybody else believes it's, it's, it's their matter, not mine. But it does become easier with age. Uh, I'm 43 now, uh, 44 you minutes. Look, mate. You, you, look, you, look, you look about 33. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I like you, Oliver. <laughs> you too. Uh, but, oh, I am. I, 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 I'm nearly 40. But, but actually, yeah, uh, 43, what was I saying here? I, I kind of lost it. <laughs> no, I know it, gets, it gets easier with age uh, um, to handle critics and stupid people. Uh, Do you know what the uh, technical uh, word for it is? Uh, yeah, you don't give a not, shit. it starts, yeah, that's another way. I can some other ways, but you probably would have your YouTube channel banned. For <laughs> You can say shit. YouTube yeah. now, I mean, it's. I, I know you mainly upload now to um, the your YouTube platform. I uh, we haven't done much the last months or two because we're working on a project with Billy Carson. So our Mars Moon right. Space TV is a little bit in the background until we yeah. get finished with that big pro uh, project we're working. When on. you upload to YouTube now, you can just say. They're swearing in this video, and they'll say, "Okay, thanks for being honest. You can monetize. It's fine." Um, that's that's how I'm still here, anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll, I, mate. I'm I'm going to uh, I'm going to end the video now because I think it's been a it's been a fantastic journey. Yeah. I'll, I'll carry on if you don't mind. We'll, me and you'll carry on having a conversation for ten minutes. Yeah, or yeah, so. yeah. But, um, yeah. Thank mm. you for coming on, Thomas. So just let let everybody know where they can find you. Um, they, 
can find me and my wife Dolly on Mars Moon Space TV. That's our platform. That's ours. Well, everything we do there is our work. But we have uh, working for Billy Carson as well on Forbidden Knowledge TV, where you also can find all of Mars Moon Space TV's uh, good stuff. And, and, and the thing is that uh, we have split it up a little bit. So things about Mars are going to go on Mars Moon Space TV on YouTube. They will also be shared on Forbidden Knowledge TV. But documentaries and, and longer uh, uh, documentaries a secret space programs that we still are working on a part two, three, and four. Uh, the Black Knight satellite that we are working on now as well, and the Baltic Sea anomaly that will come up. They won't be on YouTube. They won't be on Forbidden Knowledge uh, TV. Uh, it's it's something we do with Billy uh, together with with Billy uh, for Forbidden Knowledge TV. But we are contractors of Forbidden Knowledge TV, so we are Mars Moon Space TV working for Forbidden Knowledge TV. Does it make sense? Yes. Once yeah. once the documentary is out, then so the is, are you going to call it part three? Uh, the Baltic... it's going to be the unsolved mystery part three. Yeah. Part... Once that that is out and it's out in the open, uh, would you come on and talk about? Of course. The I would. Of course. Thank I would. you, friend. That'd be and, awesome. And if you want to dedicate a, a day to talk more about the Baltic Sea anomaly and and all the pictures and videos yes. that we have, and uh, then we can do another. Definitely, I need to start maybe just, do a live show or something like that. That'd be pretty cool. We have um, done it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you very much for coming for coming on, Thomas. Uh, guys, I'm Alien Addict. Uh, I'm going to leave the links, uh, all Thomas's links, down below in the description. Check them out, guys. Uh, check out my Patreon page. Um, you know, the best way to support the channel is to subscribe and hit the bell in the corner, uh, and a thumbs up never goes amiss. Thank you, guys. Good night. God bless. Mind the book Thank stuff. you for having me. It's been a pleasure.